So I was raised by a single mother in a place called Staten Island, New York. Anybody ever Staten Island, New York? Yes, as I like to refer to it, the place where dreams go to die. <laughs> dreams go to die. Is my mic on? Okay, all right. So can we give a round of applause? I always say the beginning for single mothers, because that's a really hard job. Thank you. All right, so I was raised by a single mother, right? And her solution with this whole financial thing because uh, she didn't have a financial education, was more overtime. I don't know if you have anybody in your family like that. They just, they, they just keep doing more and more overtime. Somehow, their life will make it through. Well, we made it through. My mother was one of those people that would put her bills out on the table, and she would take what I call those bill breaths, you know? <sighs> I don't know how we're going to do it, Tyra. <laughs> but God will make a way, right? And I remember thinking very early on, why, like, why don't you just make more money? That way you don't really have to worry about paying the bills. But she didn't say that in my house. What happened if you said that? <laughs> oh, you don't know what happened? No. <laughs> Today they call it child abuse. <laughs> Back then we called it discipline. <laughs> yes. All right, so I didn't say certain things because you weren't allowed to say that. But what I ultimately realized is it's hard to change your life without a financial education, which we heard this morning. And so those of us who are successful, who enjoy people and helping people, part of our mission is helping other people make a lot of money, but we have to help them get this education. Does everybody get that? Mm -hmm. So today, not only am I the wealthiest one in my family, I live in a town called Rhinebeck, New York. Anybody know Rhinebeck? It's where Chelsea Clinton got married, right at my house. That's not true. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's 10 minutes away, okay? It's 10 minutes away. Um, but um, a lot of celebrities live there, and I live half in New York and half in Los Angeles, and I can afford a home on 10 acres of land, and I own real estate, and all of that stuff. I don't tell you that, really, to impress you, right? My job is not to impress you. It's to impress upon you the significance of having a financial education. Everybody got that so far? Okay. Mm -hmm. Get a pen out, because I'm going to ask you to write down some notes today. They're all wealth-oriented notes. Right. All right, so, um, so not only do I have this terrific lifestyle, but I don't know if you know this, I was in show business for 26 years. Can you tell? Yes. <laughs> I didn't get used to wearing suits when I speak to people, but um, normally I have to do that. I was on television selling you products for 26 years. Everything from McDonald's to Mercedes-Benz to AT&T. I made most of my money in the world of voiceovers. Anybody know what voiceovers is? Is that yeah. voice that comes in and tells you? Yeah. Right. So, when I ventured to make a living as a performer, I realized that, you know, there are a lot of starving performers out there. That was one thing I didn't want to, want to be. So someone said, well, you should start doing commercials. Why? Because in commercials, you make something called what? Residuals. That is right. Residuals. And I was like, wow, that's really interesting, this idea of residuals. Well, how does it work? Well, you shoot this commercial once. They pat your face, you go to hair and makeup, you look into the camera, you bite the burger as many times. By the way, I used to do ads for Burger King, right? And you don't, you don't know this is the public, but there's a person called a food stylist. They have 50 burgers lined up. So they say, action, you go, mm, and you bite the burger. Another guy comes by when they say cut, and you spit in the bucket, and they bring you another burger. <laughs> commercial and it went on the air, guess what I got in the mail? Checks. I was like, this is good. Why doesn't everybody do this, right? Because my mother and everybody in her circle, they were all working for a living. And I was sitting home and collecting checks. So how many of you now, right, because today's the first day of your real financial education. How many of you in this room want more income? Let's be honest. Raise your hand. High, 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 high. Great. Everybody in this room wants more. Yes, you want twice the more income. Right? Okay. Listen to me carefully. You don't have to agree with anything that I'm about to show you today, but if you are just open to it, you're going to learn a whole new way of thinking. You ready? Yes. Yeah. 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 The last thing you want in your life is more income. Last thing you want in your life is more income. That's what they taught us. Do you know what you really want? More residual income. 
Doesn't that make sense? Because income, you actually have to get up and go to work for. Residual income, you do what? You sit home and you collect it. Do you see the difference? Yes? Yes. Okay. So your job is to have what? As much residual income every single month as possible. Are you with me so far? Yes. Great. Now, we're here this weekend to talk about real estate. And you really need to talk to these fine, really smart people around the room. Because they really know what they're talking about. I am here today to talk to you about adding stocks to your real estate portfolio. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do I own real estate as an investor? Yes, yes of course I do. I want to fly because I want more what? <laughs> yes. I like real estate, but I love the stock market. Right? Why do I love making this money residually every single month in the stock market? Because there's no leaky toilets. Do you have that when you have real estate? Mm -hmm. Yes, you do, correct? Right? Do I ever have to repair anything? No. And I can do it from anywhere in the world. Are you with me? Okay, are you with me? Yes. I'm going to keep asking you call and response. That's the whole show here for 90 minutes. All right. So, how many of you want more income? Raise your hand. Okay, these are the people I have to work on. <laughs> Trick Teach question. you, show you. The last thing you want is more income. You want more what? Residual. Yes, so you don't have to keep going out and working. Does everybody get that? Yeah. Unless that's your thing. Now, if you like working every single day for somebody else, I don't want to disturb your group. <laughs> right? But if you like sitting at home and making money legally, <laughs> that's really important. That's what I'm here to help you. Right? Are there some people who made this kind of money illegally? Yes. Oh, yeah. But we're not here for that, are we? Oh, no. The guys in the back are like, well, <laughs> so we have to pay the taxes. No. Okay. All right. So here we go. Everybody have one of those yellow packets? Yes. yes. All right. We're going to get into the stock market in a way that you've never been introduced before. It's really exciting, and it's all about residual income. However, before we get to that, because I help a lot of really famous people, right, and people who are not famous, and people who are what we call self-directed investors, make this money every single month, and they're incredibly thankful for it. They think I'm a genius. I'm really not. I just learned a system that I pass on to other people. Everybody with me? Yes. yes. All right. So when I started to do this commercial thing, I suddenly realized I was making a living, but I wasn't getting rich. Could you imagine that? Actually working at something that you really love, and at the end, you're not rich. Is anybody else having that experience working? <laughs> yeah. I was like, I'm supposed to be getting rich being on TV, right? But that's not happening. So in addition to commercials, I started doing movies. I got to work with a lot of really famous celebrities. And one of my favorite stories is I get to spend two days with Meryl Streep. Do you ever spend two days with Meryl Streep? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, not late, right? <laughs> not late. She doesn't text you back. That's I the know, problem. I know. But the thing is, even though I was having all these great experiences, I've noticed I wasn't getting rich even though I had residual income, but when the commercials were over, so was the <coughs> residual income. income. So I had to go out and do another one. I was like, okay, that's not bad. So uh, my father, who's no longer with us, says, you know what? You really need to learn how the stock market works, right? Now, I didn't know. I didn't have a financial education. I was just very ambitious. So when my father said, I want you to study the stock market, do you know what look I gave him? I call it the Scooby-Doo look. Have you ever seen this Scooby Doo? I don't know, Jack. <laughs> so I was like, okay, if you say that's the thing I should do, then that's exactly what I'm going to do. So I started. I learned how to trade, and I learned, wow, because the internet was just coming in, so I didn't need a broker. I just needed access to the market, and I started making money. I was like, this is really easy. I was very comfortable with it because it was like a residual income that I was earning, except I never had to worry about being edited out of the commercial. You with me? So I was like, I'm one of these people, you don't know me that well, but I'm one of these people when something good happens to me, I rush to tell other people, you got to do this. Now what something very interesting started to happen as I began to rush and tell other people that there was this kind of money to be made and anybody could do it because if I could do it, then you, can, you do can do it. Really, really interesting. Now, I'm going to talk to you about something that's a little bit different than what we're talking about here at Real Estate. If you don't agree with what I'm saying, just let it go. Please write this down. There is an emotional, intellectual, and spiritual aspect to making money. 
There's an emotional, intellectual, and spiritual aspect to making money. Because when I discovered this money, I knew I was going to be rich. That was easy. All I had to do was just keep following this system. So when I ran out to tell people about it, people, I hit resistance, a tremendous amount of resistance. Why? Because of your money beliefs. People did not believe this kind of money was possible. Therefore, it was not possible. Now, I don't, I'm not here to talk about religion, but I do talk a little bit about spirituality. You've got to get used to that with me, because that is the dimension in which I live in the most. When you say to the universe, this money can't be real on a monthly basis for me, do you know what the universe will say back to you? That's right. That is correct. You are absolutely 100% right. Now, this is what I've discovered from helping people in the last four to five years. People are sort of kind of like traffic cops. Are you with me? And we direct money and success towards us based on our thinking, based on our consciousness. And it's powerful. Our consciousness is very, very powerful. Right? So some of us play this game with money. Money and wealth go away from me. We direct it constantly away from us. Do you get that? Mm -hmm. Some of us are really good at playing this game. I'll take just enough. Right? So that I don't outshine my parents or life, but the rest must go away. Now, some of you in this room are excellent at directing large sums of money towards you. By the way, when you tell the universe, send that money away from me like that, do you know where it goes? Right to me. Okay. So the point is, when I talk to you today about your belief systems and your consciousness, listen, I can show you how to make this money up and down. But if I don't talk to you about your consciousness, you're going to send it away. Are you with me? Yes. We send this away. We send all of this residual income away from us based on our money beliefs, our negative thoughts. Now, where would we get these negative ideas about money that stop all of this money from coming to us? Friends and family. You are kidding me. <laughs> you mean there's some people in your family, although you love them very dearly, they're negative, 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 negative? Oh, you betcha. Might that have an effect on your ability to make this kind of money? Sure. Mm -hmm. Yes. If your any of your parents very negative or fearful, especially if they went through the depression, your grandparents, oh, you got to be careful, right? Okay. In addition to friends and family, sometimes we hear it from our religion. Could you imagine that? That there are certain things in religion that tell us that we should not be making that kind of money on a monthly basis? I'm going to give you some sayings, and then you tell me what you think. Have you ever heard this? We're talking about directing money away from us. Anybody ever hear uh, this saying? If it sounds too good to be true, <laughs> then what? It probably is. is. Isn't that great? Isn't that a great way to build wealth through real estate, stocks, investing? If it sounds, I'm just going to say small investments, because that's real, right? I don't want to do this, because this sounds to be true. Now, I'm from New York City. We love in New York City to be skeptical. You know why we're skeptical? Because New York City is a very hard town to be successful with. There's a lot of people who want to scam you or rip you off, right? But I want you to write this down. Skepticism is healthy, but it also costs you opportunity. Costs you opportunity. Because some things, although they seem too good to be true, are actually real, right? Here's another one. Uh, let's talk about these negative money thoughts very quickly. Uh, anybody ever hear this one? Money is the root of what? All evil. All evil. <laughs> Anything that happens in the world that's bad has to be with money at the base. Is that correct? It can't be that there are just some evil people in the world who are angry and want to hurt other people. It's all about money. Money is not the root of all evil. Let me help you out before I help you make this money. You've got to understand this. Because the first time I teach people how to do these trades to make this money, something runs through them. Right? Even if they have an open mind, something runs through them. Like, I can't believe this is actually happening to me. This should be happening for everybody. Right? This is not evil, gang. It's just what we do with it that makes the difference. Can you take this money and give it away to your church? Oh, yeah. yeah. How about your community? Mm -hmm. Can you start a nonprofit organization that helps people? Yep. So this really has no value other than the value that we give. Is that correct? Right. So money can't be the root of all evil. It's what we think and what we do with it. Do you all get that? 
Right, because I want people to be rich because I help people make this money so you can then help other people. Got that? Yeah. How about this one? Uh, you ever hear this one? Let me look at my notes.